welcome to Fundamentals of Light and Laser, Laboratory 1-5B. In this part of the lab, we're going to measure the Fraunhofer diffraction of a laser beam passing through a tiny pinhole. Now, in an earlier lab, we measured the varying intensity of the airy disk that was formed by the pinhole. This time, we're going to actually measure the diameter of the airy disk with a ruler. Then we'll use the mathematical formula that defines Fraunhofer diffraction to predict the size of the pinhole that formed that airy disk. Let's go look at the equipment and take some measurements. I've got the laser mounted on a laser jack, which allows me to delicately position it vertically. And I've got my 50 micron pinhole mounted in a slide holder. You can see that the Newport kit provides that. I uh, will say that the alignment of that beam onto that little hole is very critical and very delicate. So take your time and get it just right so that you get a nice maximum pattern on your target. Using a meter stick to position the target exactly one meter away, which is adequate for the 50 micron hole, according to the equation. And there's our target we will measure the diffraction pattern on. So let me turn the lights down and we will try to measure that diffraction pattern. So I have lowered the lights and slowed the camera speed down considerably so that you'll be able to see with this video the diffraction pattern formed by this very tiny pinhole. We are exactly one meter away from the pinhole aperture here. And the, the fraction pattern is striking our target down here. Let me zoom in now and let you look at that diffraction pattern more closely. And I believe that you'll be able to see it actually better than I can with my naked eye. If you look closely, you can easily see the central airy disk, which is the zeroth order of this diffraction pattern. Then there's a dark area, which is the minimum that we'll be measuring in a moment. Then you have another bright ring around here, which is the first order diffraction occurring, followed by another dim dark ring that you can just barely make out. And if you look really closely, you can see the second order diffraction out here in the perimeter. So what we're going to do is measure the diameter, if you will, of the first minimum. So I'm going to simply draw some little marks with my pen at the 9 o'clock position and the 3 o'clock position, the center of the ring, and the 12 o'clock position, and at the 6 o'clock position. And we'll turn the lights back on and we'll measure those diameters and make our calculations. So here's a close-up of our target screen with the marks I made for the first order minimum. We'll take the diameter vertically. It looks like it's about 2.6 centimeters. And horizontally, the diameter looks like about 2.3 centimeters. So we'll say the diameter for the first minimum is the average, which would be 2.45 centimeters. Let's look at some of the calculations for this laboratory. To begin with, we needed to be sure that our screen is far enough away from our pinhole to guarantee that we will see a diffraction pattern. To do that, we use equation 516, which says that our screen distance must be greater than 100 times the area of our pinhole aperture divided by the wavelength. For us, that would be 100 times 50 microns is our diameter, and we're going to that would be the diameter, so we will take the diameter squared times pi over 4 to get the area, divided by the wavelength, which in our case for a helium neon laser we'll say is 633 nanometers. Now we're going to have to be careful with our units. Microns is the same as times 10 to the minus 6 meters, and nanometers is the same as times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So if you put those numbers into your calculator, you'll get that the distance must be greater than about 31 centimeters. And we are, in fact, at one meter was how far our screen was away, so we're well 
beyond the range to be able to discern the diffraction pattern. In fact, you saw it on the screen quite easily, and that's evidence of the fact that we are far enough away. Next, we're asked to calculate the predicted size of that central airy pattern disk, and that would be the radius of that is equal to 1.22 times the wavelength of the light times the distance to the screen divided by the diameter of our pinhole. So if we substitute in our values, we have 1.22 times 633 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, or 633 nanometers, times 1 meter. We have exactly 1 meter, so we'll say 1.00 meters. And divide that by the diameter of our aperture, which was 50 microns, or 50 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. And if you... You put all those numbers into your calculator, you'll find the answer of 0 0.015 meters, or a diameter, we'll use a little d, predicted for our pinhole of 3.0 centimeters. And if you'll recall, we measured our diameter of our airy disk to be 2.45 centimeters. And if you calculate that, percent difference, you'll get about 18 percent difference. That's really quite large, larger than we would like to see. And so let's try to work this problem another way. Suppose that 50 micron pinhole is subject to question. Maybe it's not really 50 microns. What would that, what would our, suppose we measured our disk at 2.45 and we solved for the diameter of our pinhole. And the diameter for our pinhole predicted would equal 1.22 times the wavelength times the screen distance divided by the radius of our airy pattern. We'll say the measured value. And if we substitute in our values of 1.22 times 633 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, and our screen distance was 1.00 meters, and we measured 2.45 centimeters, or, in, or 0 0.0245 meters, or since we want half of that, we'll say one half times 0 0.0245 meters. And if you calculate that out, you'll get that the predicted value for our diameter of our pinhole is 63.0 microns. Now, we just happened to have access to a microscope here, and we took that slide and actually took a photo micrograph of it and measured it, and this is the results that we've got. This is what the, our 50 micron pinhole looks like up close, and we use some software to make those measurements, and you can see the values here of the diameters measured at four different locations across that hole. It's actually not perfectly round, but it's pretty close. If you'll take the average of those four diameter measurements, you'll find that the measured diameter of that pinhole is an average of 64.11 microns. And compare that, we measured actually, predicted it would be 63 microns, not 50 microns. And that results in a percent difference of about 2% difference. That makes us feel a whole lot better. But we can verify experimentally and determine what the size of that pinhole was rather than take for granted the labeled value of 50 microns. And so physics once again triumphs.